Hey, welcome back. Since we're going to go look at a combined gas law sample problem, and so we have got one right here. And so let's go ahead and read this. We have a closed system initially with a pressure and volume of 927 torr and 5,210 milliliters with an unknown temperature. Question is if the same system experienced a change in pressure and temperature um, and volume to 0.784. Atmospheres, 8,360 milliliters and 175 degrees Celsius. What would be the initial temperature of the system in Kelvin? And so, what we've got to do first is kind of a go ahead and underline all of the key parts of this so we can begin to make sense of this. Now, we're kind of cheating already because we already know it's a combined gas law, but let's see if we can kind of go through this and kind of just pretend we didn't know that we we're going to use the equation and we can see if this is really the way we solve the correct. Uh, equation uh, dilemma to see if we're using the right one. And so here's the the information we know. We know we've got, we have 927 torr. This is a pressure and it's the first one we encounter so we're going to put a little P1. Here's a volume for us. It's a milliliter. So here's a volume one for us. Okay, so let me go ahead and put this over here. And so here's our V1 and we have an unknown temperature. And this was what we're looking for. This is our T1. We also know that we're going to have a change in pressure. Here's the second pressure. Here's our P2. We have a volume change here, V2. And we've got our new temperature here, T2. So if you look at this, we've got three variables of pressure in the first instance and three variables of pressure, volume, and temperature in the, in the third instance. Um, so we want to make sure that we got this and so essentially what we've got here really is a combined gas law because what we've got the equation we're going to use is the following. So here's the equation we're going to use. We're going to use P1 V1 divided by T1. This is going to be equal to P2 V2 divided by T2. And so all we need to do is kind of go through, identify the different sections and plug them right into the equation. So we'll begin with P1. We know that P1 is 927 Tor, and we're probably going to need to change this because we've already got an atmosphere. It's a lot easier for us to work in atmospheres. If you prefer, other people prefer Tor, so it's really up to you. Because the problem is asking us for temperature, it really does make no difference which units we use for pressure. We just got to pick one and make sure that both of them are the same. So we're going to take this 927 Tor, multiply this by our volume, 5210, and so this is going to be milliliters. And this is going to be divided by our T1. In this particular case, we don't know. So we're going to say T1 is equal to that. This is then going to be equal to our P2. And our P2 here is going to be 0 0.784 atmospheres. And we're going to multiply this value times our V2, which is 8360 milliliters. And we're going to divide all of this by our T2, which in this particular case is 175.0 degrees Celsius. Now, if you haven't already figured out, we're going to have to convert this Celsius to Kelvin. So let's go ahead and do that now and just substitute it so that we don't have any loose numbers out here. So we're going to take 175 and we're going to add 273 to it. And that's going to give us the following number, 448 Kelvin. So let me go ahead and erase that here. And so that gives us 448 Kelvin. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and just convert our 927 Tor. Let's go ahead and convert that to atmospheres. And in order for us to do that, we're going to take 927 Tor and I'm going to multiply it by the following conversion factors. 0 0.00131 atmospheres. We want atmospheres on the top in the numerator because that's what we're looking for over one Tor. Here the Tor is going to cancel and what we've got is our answer for Atmosphere. So let me go ahead and do that. 927 times 0 0.00131 gives us the answer of 1.214 atmospheres. This number is what I'm going to go ahead and replace up top. Instead of doing 927 Tor, we're going to go ahead and replace it with the 1.214. And so we'll do that here at the top and erase it. And here we go. 1.214 atmospheres. And by doing this, it allows us then to kind of have all our units the same. And so let me just erase this bottom part all the way across. And since we have atmospheres in the first variable, we have atmospheres on the second variable, all we really need to do 
now is to kind of go ahead and do the multiplication that we need to do. If we simplify this a little bit, we'll take the 1.214 times the 5210. That'll give us the following number. It'll give us 6. Point, well, let me see, make sure I got this right. 1.214 times 5210, and we're going to get 6,000. 324.94, our units are going to be atmosphere milliliters divided by T1. And if we do the same thing on the other side and just multiply our numbers, 0.784 multiplied by 8,360, this gives us 6,554.24. Again, our units atmosphere milliliters divided by 448 Kelvin. Now, in order for us to kind of do this, we're going to use the uh, fish method in this case. I know I haven't used it in other videos, but I'm going to go ahead and use it here. And so here's the fish method. I'm going to go ahead and use white just so you can see it clearly. And so here's the fish method. <clears throat> Excuse me. And essentially what we're going to do, since we want to end over here where the dot is, I'm going to start at the other end. So that means I'm going to take my 6,300. 24, so I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply it with the 448 first. And so let's do that now. 6,324.94 times 448. That should give you, if you do the math, 2,833,573.12. And then once we've got that number, we're going to go ahead and divide it by the 6,554.24. So divided by 6554.24. When you do all of this math, your T1 that you wind up getting is the following, 432.3 Kelvin, okay? And so that's what we're looking for. This is the answer to this equation. So hopefully that was helpful. Go ahead and subscribe, keep watching, keep practicing these problems, and pretty soon you're going to be very, very proficient at solving these types of problems.